Hello and welcome to our July Career Connections event. My name is Glade Montgomery. I'm a Senior Vice President of Partnerships here at Project Lead the Way. And we're so happy that you could join us today for our event that's brought to you by Project Lead the Way and our partners at Ascension and Burns and McDonald. We're going to be joined today by uh, not only our partners at Ascension and Burns and McDonald, but we do have 10 master teachers uh, that are going to be here to share in breakout rooms ways that they've made connections with their local communities and develop partnership teams. So we want to give them a big thank you. Uh, again, we also want to want to thank Ascension and Burns and McDonald. Uh, you're going to hear from from members of those organizations and how they support not only Project Lead the Way, but schools in their area. And we also want to welcome all of our teachers that are experiencing core training throughout the country at Project Lead the Way. We know this is a very busy time for you, and uh, we really appreciate you giving up a little bit of time to come and learn a little bit more about how you can connect with local entities in your communities. Just a brief overview of our agenda today. Uh, we've given a, a brief welcome, but uh, I'm going to talk just very, very briefly about uh, Project Lead the Way and a little bit of an overview of our different programs that we have. Most of you are very familiar with those, but we're also going to talk about how career connections are embedded in all of the coursework that, that we have here at Project Lead the Way and the different ways that you can experience that through implementation of our, our curriculum. We're, then we're going to hear from our partners at Burns and McDonald in Ascension and how they uh, are working with schools in their communities and supporting education, not only in Project Lead the Way schools, but other schools as well. Then we're gonna have an opportunity for uh, all of our participants to choose a breakout room from the program that they're involved with and hear from our master teachers. Our master teachers do uh, so many things to help support Project Lead the Way and educators across this country, but they're very experienced in working with their local communities and partnership uh, teams and their business and industry and really making those career connections come to life for their students. So you're gonna be able to hear from all of them in breakout rooms and you'll have an opportunity to ask them some questions as well. Then we'll come back from our breakout rooms and have some closing remarks uh, and uh, try to answer any questions that any of you might have. You'll also be able to ask your master teachers in your breakout rooms, uh, hopefully time permits that you'll be able to ask them some questions. So starting out here, this, this slide probably looks familiar to most of you, but this outlines the five different programs that we have at Project Lead the Way, our launch pre-K through five, uh, program, our middle school program, which is called Gateway, and then the three high school pathways, biomedical science, computer science, and engineering. And a couple things that I would point out about this, you know, first of all, uh, you can see from the different colored lines that those three strands, those three pathways, biomedical science, computer science, and engineering, uh, are built in throughout all of our programming from pre-K all the way through 12th grade. So students can experience any of those three pathways depending on what's best for your school and your community and what you would like to place your emphasis on. But the other thing that I wanted to point out, I've been with Project Lead the Way nine years this month and our organization is celebrating our 25th anniversary. But at Project Lead the Way, we always are looking to be able to grow and expand in certain ways in certain areas that are beneficial to our schools and our students. Uh, just in the last decade alone, since I've been with Project Lead the Way, we fully developed our launch pre-K through five program. That is new since I started with the organization, as well as the four-year uh, computer science program at the high school level. We've also added uh, Spanish and English versions to our launch and gateway program. So at Project Lead the Way, we're always looking to try to expand and grow and make things as relevant as we possibly can for uh, all of our schools and our teachers and our students. So one of these uh, five programs, our participants today will be able to select a breakout room uh, to the specific area where you're going through training and you can hear from our master teachers then. A lot of you are experiencing core training right now and not only 
uh, are you learning about the curricular content that is in the area that you're going to be teaching your students? But there's also an emphasis placed on career learning. Uh, you're probably uh, well aware and, and learning right now that what we refer to as transportable or those professional skills are embedded in all of our coursework. Things like collaboration, problem solving, ethical reasoning and mindset, communi communication, creative and critical thinking, and obviously technology is embedded in everything that we do. Those skills are so important. Virtually every uh, profession, every job opening is looking for one or more of those skills in the people that they want to hire. We also try to uh, have career exposure in all of our modules, units, and courses. We have uh, uh, career connections profiles where we actually have little video snippets of actual professionals in fields that are sharing their experiences of, of what they do, uh, their educational background, what took them to uh, what it took them to get to those jobs that they currently have. Many of those examples come from PLTW alumni. So if you have PLTW alumni that you're aware of, please pass those on to us as we're always looking to feature them in blog posts uh, or impact profiles and uh, have them help with those career connection profiles. You're gonna hear in a little bit from two of our fantastic partners, but what do PLTW partners do? Well, not only do they help financially support PLTW programs through the PLTW grants program, but our partners directly support students and teachers in other ways. They help provide classroom equipment and supplies. They offer mentoring, internships, and career learning opportunities in a variety of ways. Two of our partners are gonna share those examples today. And many of our partners also participate in our curriculum revision or rewrites to help validate the knowledge and skills in our curriculum to make sure our programs are the standard in career learning. So our partners uh, just provide tremendous support for us uh, through in, in a variety of ways. So now uh, I want to turn it over to two of our fantastic partners from Burns and McDonald and Ascension, and you're going to hear about how they work in their local communities. Uh, and we'll have an opportunity to ask them a couple quick questions before we go to our breakout rooms. So first, I want to introduce from Burns and McDonald, Emily Roden. Emily is the Senior Community Relations Strategist, and she connects employee owners to K-12 teachers and students in the communities throughout the country. She facilitates programs and partnerships with schools, educators, and nonprofit partners to inspire the next generation of STEM leaders. Her personal passions include connecting all students to STEM, as well as developing and maintaining relationships with teachers and students. And Emily lives in Lee's Summit, Missouri, with her husband and two children. Emily, thank you so much for being a part of our program. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes. Good. Yes. I'm on my phone and this has never happened, but my Zoom is not working on my computer. So we'll roll with this. Um, so thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yes. Um, I've been at Burns and McDonald for um, a total of 15 years, but 10 years currently in this role where I've been um, uh, specifically focusing on the relationship between um, education and industry. So um, with that, I started out in human resources because it originally started out when we were a, um, we decided to invest in our local science center here in Kansas City. And it, um, it, it was an average science center at best. Um, and so we really invested in it. But when we did that, um, we were going the exhibit route, like what are the diff different exhibits that we could do? And, you know, sitting around a table and brainstorming out came this really cool concept of having a, um, having students come up with exhibit ideas and then we would build them. And so lo and behold, Battle of the Brains developed. And um, so we offered that as a competition. It's actually every other year um, as we do a build season one year and then we do um, competition season the next. Um, but in that we saw that there is a great disconnect and how can we help out? So that's kind of how my job started out. 
um, in doing this. So I joined the foundation in 2021 to really focus on um, the outreach side of that. And um, so we're, we're really looking to um, invest in um, STEM education as well as putting in our volunteer time and efforts there. So um, some of the things that we do, um, we are able to, um, oh, and I can actually talk about what Burns McDonald does, sorry. <laughs> um, so what we do, uh, people ask us often, all the time, um, I know you're an engineering firm, but exactly what do you do? And so this is what we do in picture form. Um, we are a consulting engineering firm. We hire um, what I call the big four engineers. So electricals, mechanicals, civils, and chemicals um, as consulting engineers. We also hire architects, scientists, so all those ology majors. Um, we hire them, um, construction professionals as well. And we don't do trades. Um, we do contract that out, but we do hire like construction management majors, construction engineers, that type of thing. Also um, like estimators, um, uh, oh, others in that, in that role, more, more, more of a supervisory role um, on a job site. Um, and so what we do basically makes the world go around, right? So whether that's transportation, so highways, bridges, roads, dams to um, water treatment facilities, power plants, lots of lots of power. Our power grid is aging, y'all. So we're looking to, to take that on and we do a lot with transmission and distribution of that power. Um, also a lot of um, work with our government. So federal projects that we do, some that are top secret that none of us really know uh, a lot about. Um, and then also environmental studies, making sure that what we're doing is protecting the bugs and bunnies of the world. So that is what we do. All right, moving on. Our um, very exciting um, partnership, kind of a formal partnership um, has started with um, a commitment with um, Project Led the Way for the next three years with a $1.5 million uh, um, donation with going into our grant programs throughout the nation in um, cities and communities where, where we work. So that's been fun when our first um, year um, grant cycle just came through and we, um, we got to kind of hone in on some, some really cool schools. Um, the, the grants program is, is, is awesome at Project Lead the Way and we were very excited to be a part of that. Um, we've also done work with like senior showcases, um, with um, EDD um, capstone events. Actually, we'll be um, hosting for the first time in, in a few years. We're back in person to host the EDD capstone kickoff. So they'll be doing brainstorming. We work with the Kansas City STEM Alliance a lot on that um, to do that. But some other fun things that we do revolving around STEM is like job shadowing, classroom presentations, you know, the typical things that you would think of. Um, we also like to participate on advisory boards um, with the local school districts here in Kansas City. Um, that gives a great open communication line uh, between teachers and um, our professionals. And teachers often will ask, what are you guys, okay, now what's going on in the, in the, um, you know, in industry that we need to, you know, help our students be a part of, um, how can we make it better? And then Burns and Mac has, has done some really cool things where we wouldn't have been able to do those had we not been on advisory boards. For instance, um, there was a school district that had a teacher that was going to be teaching Revit and she had no idea really, or a lot of time and resources to dedicate to learning how to do that. And so one of our um, drafters came in and she ended up on Saturdays, they ended up getting together and she taught her Revit. Um, so just because we were on the advisor board, that that's kind of how those like those sidebars kind of can happen as well as some of these formal things. Um, but we do um, some really cool things with trying to get minorities and girls interested in uh, STEM. So we'll do some different recruitment events, whether that is hey, Burns and Mac will buy lunch. If you can get the students in, um, we'll come in and talk about STEM, free lunch, um, and we'll try to show them, hey, this is what you could be doing in high school to prepare yourself for a really cool um, uh, uh, career once you graduate. 
So we do that. Um, and also we've done teacher externships, right? So a lot of times teachers don't have time to get out and see what it's like in the real world. So we've done teacher externships on top of that. Um, we also do what we call career jumping, which is kind of like speed dating, but for careers. Um, and I love doing that for middle school and high schoolers. And that is like, well, um, it's like speed dating, but uh, careers and you sit down every 10 minutes, you move on to another career. And we do that for about eight different career types here at Burns and Max. Some are, um, you know, engineering. So you need a degree, a four-year degree. Some are not. Um, drafting, for instance, doesn't necessarily need a four-year degree. So, you know, do that. Those ology majors, our sciences, we do those. Um, architecture. So very cool to have a student come in um, into our building because that is point number one, right? Being able to actually come into a professional setting and then be learning about seven different, several different types of career um, choices that are out there in a matter of two, three hours. All right, next. So we are on social media. So if you are interested in connecting with Burns McDonald or just seeing what we have out there, um, please follow us on our, our social pages. So we have our Burns Max STEM um, on Twitter and on Facebook. And we also have a Pinterest site. Um, so we share some of our ideas and some cool projects that are going on or maybe some cool books for kids to read. Um, so we'll have that available. We also have a STEM resources site. So you can follow us um, there. We have about 25 activities on there um, that we have done um, and can say, hey, yes, these are fun or these work. Um, and then we also have some really cool inspirational short videos that are available as well um, that kind of showcase our professionals and what they do um, and maybe why they got interested in STEM, how they became a part of STEM. Um, and so you are welcome to, to show those as well. Of course, Great. you are um, able to email me as well. Um, I do have an email and I can share that with you um, in the chat once I figure out that how to do that from my phone. Um, I, will, I will share that as well. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Emily. We really appreciate your, not only your support of Project Lead the Way, but your support um, of schools all around the area where you work. So thank you so much for sharing. If Absolutely. You have Thanks for having me. If you have specific questions for Emily, we're going to come back to a little bit of time if we have it after Margaret talks. So at this time, I want to switch it over to Margaret Elliott from Ascension. <clears throat> Margaret is the uh, clinical communication strategist at Ascension. She works with clinical teams to ensure internal and external communications are aligned with their national strategy. She joined Ascension in 2009 as a web communications specialist. And previously, she spent 12 years in provider and web communications at Mercy. She also worked as a nonprofit executive and fundraising consultant and as a freelance writer and editor. Welcome, Margaret. Thank you so much for taking time to join us. Thank you, everybody, uh, for having me. I appreciate being a part of the call. Uh, just a couple things on a personal note. Um, I wanted to um, share that I also have uh, lived in St. Louis since I graduated college, uh, currently in a 104-year-old house, um, and that I've been married uh, to a St. Louis native uh, for about 35 years now. So. And um, you'll notice that um, in my bio there, it says that I've worked a lot in web communications and with um, clinical teams. And I want to notice that I do not have either a degree in IT or in uh, a clinical discipline. My degrees are in art history and business. So um, I think one reason I've been able to do that is that I've just had a, um, a curiosity about things and a penchant for lifelong learning. And Ascension supports that actively with lots of opportunities to grow. Next slide. So just a couple of words about Ascension. Um, we are a faith-based organization. We came about when several uh, congregations joined together to sponsor a new healthcare system. It was uh, built out of a variety of healthcare systems from across the country. And um, some of those congregations date back hundreds of years, but Ascension is relatively new. It was formed in 1999. So our mission is to provide uh, personalized, compassionate care for all persons, especially those who are most vulnerable and in need. 
And uh, we engage with our patients and each other um, using something that we call the ABIDE framework, which is an acronym for appreciation, belonging, inclusivity, diversity, and equity. So we really listen to people and want their points of view represented. Next slide. So here's a slide that shows what that kind of looks like. You can see that we uh, have a huge print footprint through the center of the United States. And this slide just gives some of the uh, stats about the number of people that work for us and the number of lives that we touch every year. Um, we are um, have a huge uh, network of people and places. Our largest markets are in Florida, Indiana, Michigan, Tennessee, Texas, and Wisconsin. But we also have smaller ministries, as we call them, in such places as Baltimore, Maryland, Dumas, Arkansas, and New Orleans, Louisiana. So that means a lot of opportunities for community partnerships too. Next slide. So in our early days of founding, I think I would compare Ascension to the 13 colonies. There were a lot of different practices, a lot of different names of organizations, and there was no unity about our identity. And so in the mid 2000s, we began what we called our journey to be becoming one Ascension. And we brought all of our locations together under one name. And uh, as you can see, this uh, branding strategy has offered a number of advantages, one of which is establishing recognition for Ascension across our various geographies and facilitating shared innovation, but also uh, enhancing our recruitment efforts with career paths that are portable across all of our different markets and facilities. So once you get in the door at Ascension, you have a lot of places to go and a lot of things to uh, explore and develop and learn uh, and potentially pursue uh, multiple career paths during your time with us. We have a lot of long-term employees uh, and I uh, am not even by any means uh, one of the longest term. Uh, next slide, please. So we have a tradition of supporting youth education and services in all of our markets as a complement to our uh, healthcare business. And uh, specifically with Project Lead the Way, uh, we have uh, had a long history of our leaders serving on the boards of uh, the organization. Our president and CEO, Joe Mpichike, was a longtime board member, and now my uh, boss, the Chief Marketing and Communications Officer, Nick Ragone, is on the board of, of uh, Project Lead the Way. And that uh, led to my own involvement with the organization because um, I have that long career of nonprofit management and fundraising, and he wanted to take advantage of my expertise. So I was pleased to serve um, as well as uh, liaison to Project Lead the Way uh, for Ascension on the national team that helped guide uh, updates to the biomed curriculum, along with our chief medical officer of Ascension Medical Group, Dr. Bala Yahia. So we've been involved for quite a while and have really uh, been rewarded richly for the things that we have done. We did have pro, um, programs specifically planned in 2019 and 20 uh, to have showcases for the students uh, with their um, capstone projects. We were going to award scholarships and uh, other financial support to the students who presented and competed in our showcases in three of our markets. Unfortunately, those plans were tabled by the pandemic, uh, which has not only caused us to have to uh, postpone those showcases, but also to really focus on uh, what we call business recovery, uh, because COVID was a very hard time for healthcare organizations, and we're still trying to recoup uh, lost revenue from that. However, um, we are still looking to the future for um, student showcases, and right now we're focused on the St. Louis market because that's where our headquarters is located. We do uh, have a charity golf tournament, which um, is uh, gaining national recognition. It is an official PA PGA event, and so that is also exclusively supporting area youth organizations. Next slide. So when most people think of careers in healthcare, they think of nurses and doctors, but um, since part of our biz business and mission is to transform healthcare, uh, that requires a much larger menu of skills. And here are just a few of the ones that are part of our workforce and that we are actively recruiting for. Uh, we're having as much difficulty as other employers in uh, maintaining the workforce that we need. 
Uh, and so uh, we are always looking for talented folks and have a lot of career paths that are developed along everything from uh, agile design and web design to um, group purchasing, social work, spiritual care, um, medical equipment and facilities management, just a whole menu of things. So you have a lot of places to go and a lot of different skill sets that are required to operate Ascension. Next slide. Oh, sorry, I uh, just uh, wanted to, to add then that uh, you can learn more about us at our uh, main website, ascension.org, and you'll find our social media handles on uh, the in the footer of that website. You're welcome to follow us. You're also welcome to reach out to me on LinkedIn or to email me at margaret.elliot at ascension.org. So I welcome uh, your contacts and questions and thank you very much. Okay, Margaret, thank you so much for, for sharing everything that Ascension does. And I, I love the example that you gave earlier that some of the roles that you've had in your career weren't necessarily things that, that you had academically, academically prepared for. But, you know, that's part of what we try to teach PLTW students is, you know, they've got to learn to adapt and, and solve problems. And if they have those skills, they, they can adapt to any type of role that they may be involved in. So we'll just take maybe a minute or two to open it up to see if anybody has any questions for either Emily or Margaret before we quickly transition to our breakout rooms. Any participants can feel free to come off mute and, and just ask something or put it in the chat, either one. Okay, with, with respect to time, I do wanna give our master teachers an opportunity to share what they're doing within their communities. So at this time, we're gonna get ready to shift to our breakout rooms. But first, I just wanna thank all of our master teachers that are giving up their time, uh, many of them who are leading training sessions as, uh, as we speak um, and, and having them come on and share ideas. We've got master teachers represented from all over the country. And you know I've said this before, but the master teachers at Project Lead the Way really are the best of the best in the country. They are just outstanding educators and they're always more than willing to share uh, their experiences with new teachers and, and new schools. So thank you so much, all of our master teachers for participating today. So as we get ready to go to breakout rooms, make sure that uh, when you enter a room, you, our, our core training participants will be able to choose the program that they want to go to. Our master teachers will already be assigned. Try to stay on mute if you can, unless you've got a question. Uh, and if you do have a question, please introduce yourself and, and let us know where you are from. So at this time, Sheila, will go ahead and transition to our breakout rooms. Hello, my name is Erica Card and I am from the Elkhorn Area School District in Wisconsin. I am the coordinator for the four-year-old program, so the preschool program, all the way up through the eighth grade program, and then I work with our high school coordinator as well. Um, my real daytime job, I guess, if you will, is to be a sixth grade science teacher, but I spent about 13 years of my career in fifth grade, so I'm very familiar with launch um, and, and what launch has to offer. I'm also a, um, a co-producer at our Maker Fair. So this is one way that we've been able to come up with and get community partnerships is through our Maker Fair. And as you can see, we have the students who set up booths at the Maker Fair. Some of those are sponsored by a variety of um, business partners that we have. We also partner with like our high school and our high school PLTW program, and as well as the universities in our area, like in that bottom right hand corner. You can see the University of Wisconsin Madison came over. We partnered with them for robotics, and then they started talking to some other robotics companies that we had had at the Maker Fair. So, just having your students be able to connect with those different career paths through a fair or a science fair, or another thing that we have done that's similar too is when you have conferences for the elementary um, level there's those parents you don't always necessarily need to see because their child is doing fine, they're on, you know, they're on track, their behavior is good. So we've also in our library transformed into kind of a little mini fair 
with bringing in some of the partners that I'll talk about as well to have some little boosts, but also have our students showcase what they're doing in Project Lead the Way. Then another thing that we've done is I know um, the woman that spoke from Ascension, she had talked about she came from Mercy. We don't have Ascension right here in Elkhorn, but we do have Mercy and we have actually partnered our launch program with them, um, particularly for supplies for our kindergarten, um, the biomedical module, and also in first grade when they're doing light and sound and they have a piece where they use stethoscopes, they have given us um, hospital grade, I guess, if you will, or medical grade stethoscopes that we've been able to partner with them and have those for our kids. And our kids, it's noisy in the classrooms and the hallway when you're doing those centers. So these stethoscopes have allowed our kids to better hear their heartbeat. So that was a kind of a supply. One, we've also had those nurses and doctors come in and talk to students. We've gone on field trips like Weather Day, um, our uh, Milwaukee Brewers, our professional baseball team here, and CBS 58, one of the TV stations, offers Weather Day. So we've gone to that, and we've been able to get down on the field, talk to the meteorologists, stop at their booths, and things like that to bring in those additional careers. So we continue to work really closely with the Milwaukee Brewers in that aspect, and they've also been able to come out and send they, they're called the racing hot dogs or the racing weenies. Um, they come have come out to our school just to generate that excitement just in um, being able to partner with them for a field trip that we went on. And we've also had a lot of companies come in and do guest speaking. We've had from the airlines in years past, a pilot come in and talk to students for the third grade um, science of flight. And then they did an activity with the students. So that was really neat. Um, we've had waste management come in and talk to students about recycling and about, um, you know, sewage, different things that go along with a bunch of the Project Lead the Way modules. And then we also have a solar farm here in town. So like um, Burns and McDonald, they do solar power, which is in some of the Project Lead the Way units. Um, we've had them come in so they can actually really touch a live solar panel, see what it's like and so on. So we've kind of done that as well. One thing that we have in our district as well is we have a position that's called the career and tech ed coordinator. And she helps us to partner with a lot of the different businesses within, within the town. So we might go to her and we might say, this is what we're working on. Do you have a business partnership that we can connect with or a career partnership or a technical uh, partnership? And then they'll come in at our middle school. Just this last year, we're all required, every team is required to have a partnership with somebody or your department can have the partnership with somebody within our community. So that's going to kind of start to trickle down to our elementary because we've seen um, enormous benefit for our students from getting involved with the businesses um, and higher education within our community. So our most recent project and my partner that I have with um, my teaching partner is actually with Wasa Homes and they are a local construction company, but I know that Wasa Homes is throughout the whole state of Wisconsin, maybe um, into other states, but our local um, ones uh, for green architecture, which is a gateway course, but we've also had them do some measuring and things with our elementary um, because of our partnership, we've been able to overpour the, the company Wasa Homes onto our elementary launch because I'm the coordinator. So they do some measuring and they measure how far their cars go in fourth grade when they're doing that and teach them about measurement and then relay it to measurements important to learn here because you're going to use it in architecture construction later in your life. So these are just some pictures. This year, it was very fun because we got to partner with our Elkhorn Kiwanis. So some of those service organizations in your community, you might want to reach out to them uh, because they provided us with a $10,000 grant to build the building that you see in the third picture here. Um, our students actually built that entire thing. So our sixth graders did all the measuring, all the cutting, all the nailing, you know, screwdriver things. You can see a girl with a nail gun here and so on. So they did that right during our school day on our school property. 
and our entire school is going to benefit because it's going to be an outdoor education. On the side that you see hanging over, we actually partnered with a new partner called Adams Electric. Uh, just It's just an uh, electrical company within our city here. And they um, had someone that didn't want their solar panels anymore. They didn't work out right. So we're getting those six solar panels to go onto this building to be able to power the building outside. So that's just um, some of those partnerships that we have, but I would be more than happy to answer any questions you may have. Hello. Hello. Oh, you're gonna, you're here, you're gonna go. Right? Yeah, yeah, Perfect. Erica, if you wanna go ahead and talk about your partnerships and then we can um, answer questions, um, ask questions of both of you afterwards. I'm hoping to share my screen soon. I have it, Erica, if you want me to share on that your That would behalf. be perfect. Okay. I'm on an iPad and they don't play nice. That's fine. I will share it for you. Okay. So I'm trying to, okay. There. Did everybody Perfect. see it? Okay. I'm on team too much. So I apologize. I'm at a summit with the Smithsonian Science Institute. So I'm trying to be in two places at once. So please accept my apologies, but um, I really wanted to make sure that I got a chance to participate in something so amazing. And especially with Erica Clark, who I've admired from afar on Twitter. So it's nice to see you in person. Nice to meet you. All right. Um, I guess I am the coordinator for the STEM uh, initiative with Kansas City Public Schools. And we started out with the upper grades doing um, the high school and the gateway and middle school. And we did a whole elementary um, implementation. And I was a part of that at the ground level when we adopted it. And before that, we were just computer teachers. And so I was privileged enough to be able to see and do everything from the beginning and be able to see how we implemented that. Um, I think unique that I need to make sure I express is that we do PLTW as a special. So students come to us on a weekly rotation. So some students come once a week and um, we try to have our upper grades come um, three through five come twice a week. So uh, we have been really pleased with this and I became coordinator two years ago. And when I did, I collaborated with the science coordinator so that our standards would overlap what we did with our PLTW modules match what teachers were either front loading, doing simultaneously or as a review. So that's kind of our thing, right? So what was really important to me um, is that I included or at least got an idea of what our stakeholders would be. And so during that part, um, I went to the high school and middle school and found out what do students need to be successful or at least to have an advantage with um, utilizing the skills that they learn in launch. And so um, we did a lot of collaborating conversations. I started um, reaching out to our local STEM ecosystem and we're privileged to have case system alliance as our ecosystem here in Kansas City, which brings us business resources, um, industry, volunteers, um, internships, and opportunities for doing things out of the school space. And so we're able to bring all the city and the parents and everybody together uh, for the advantage of all the education that goes on. And through that, our um, all of our elementary schools did receive the distinguished launch um, title. So that was um, a really good honor that I was able to highlight that with our um, schools. Um, so being the expert, bringing in the experts was really important. Um, a lot of my colleagues voiced that when they're implementing launch, they don't feel like they know everything in order to be able to deliver that to the students. And even with the robust PD that is currently embedded, um, it was important to me to not even personally feel like I had to know everything and I had to have all of the details. So one of the things that we have was an organization called NEPRIS. And so they host um, all of the volunteers that would like to talk about their industry. And so we just um, created um, industry um, set segments where we could talk about. Um, so for the tigers, then they talk to a zoo 
and they had the exact same everything of the tigers in the molt, just like it is in the module. And for, I have lungs on there. So we talk with our local uh, children's hospital and they're able to help replicate that for some of our students that have asthma and they're able to talk to them about what's going on with their bodies and how that um, correlation goes in there. And then we also just um, really dig into all of the, the mecca of what we have available for us, our construction firms, our engineering firms, and um, offer them to come in. And some of them actually have programs where they build that in for their employees work day, and they have 40 hours of volunteer service. And so they come and do some of the things that may simulate their actual work that they do every day. So some of our um, things that we do in class, I really like for to have a real world connection. I want students to know that they're not just in there for a grade, but that what they know or what they have seen or exposed to is things that happen in real life. So with the kindergartners, when we're doing structure and function, um, our one of our schools is African centered um, theme. And so they talk about the Gullah and the Geechees, the pyramids. And so we're able to really infuse that with the kindergartners as they're studying that. And J.E. Dunn is one of the um, partners during that, and they actually have the engineers come and do activities in the classrooms. Um, one of the other partners that I didn't get up here is um, Collisions. Um, I work with uh, Children's Mercy Hospital. They have a um, department that works on making sure helmets are in place and your um your seat belts are correct and your car seats are correct. And so they did a really good job of talking to students about, you know, collisions and being safe and making that connection to them every day. And it's a place that they're familiar with because kids go to Children's Hospital, or at least they've seen it or see the commercials. Um, our students have the privilege of going to Science City and our uh, local um, um, Burns and McDonald is a good funder for that. And so it's a really awesome time that we're able to get even scholarships for in the entry and bus. So students can go and they're able to see pretty much every single thing that we have for a module is in our science city. And um, so we have water there, there's water tables, there's flight, there's a helicopter there that's propelled by, um, you use um, pedals to prepare, to propel it forward. So much of what we do, I can always schedule a field trip for all the grade levels and teachers can take those students. And then lastly, um, one thing that I did in the classroom that I really was, um, it was really big beneficial and just before COVID was the fifth grade infection detection. Um, I wanted students to have a way to demonstrate their learning. And so I told them we were going to do PSAs. So we did a whole thing of what is a PSA, but I let them choose a virus or a disease and they did a research project on it and they came in with these elaborate displays and some posters and some um, just flyers. And we um, collaborated with our nursing department of our public schools. And so we were able to do stall talks. And so students were able to get their poster that they generated about that. Um, maybe it was a hand washing technique and we got them installed in the bathrooms for the public schools. And so that was a real life way that students can really see that they were having an impact and that they at that point were the technical experts in that area. And they were like so, so proud and one of the ways that we um, did that was just have them go in front and present as if they were on the news and they were a newscaster. And like parents were so excited. It was, it was really, really good. I mean, we had kids that went all out. So here are my stakeholders. And I would have to say that they're helping us make moves in ways that we couldn't do in our own capacity. And I say that my biggest cheerleader is Casey STEM Alliance and they kind of are the hub of all the things that we're able to do. And you can kind of see all the things on here. Um, one thing that I want to highlight is Remake Learning Days because it is a nationwide event. So if you haven't heard of Remake Learning Days, um, grab a hold to that and look that up because um, they have that once a year. It's in May, um, usually the second week. And basically what what we have doing is partnering with some type of business, some type of industry, and we highlight ways that we're learning and ways that it's, we do STEM in non-conventional ways. And so I partnered with Stowers Institute. They got lake water out of our local lake and brought, um, they are, they study um, 
they study mice and they have microscopes. So they bought microscopes and let the students see what was in them. So that matched with our students that were studying water. So they could see everything moving around in the water and they're like, ew. And then that made it really gross. When they said, ew, then I know I got them. <laughs> um, so that was like super awesome. And then um, Rockhurst bought um, things regarding math. And so that really tied into a lot of like what we do is all inclusive. And so it's a really awesome time to see students um, experiencing learning and let them see that other people care outside of their doors, um, outside of their classroom and how what they're learning in the room goes everywhere and it's able to transform, you know, a lot of things in their life and a lot of things that they're um, interested in. And I guess really like just to bring people in and get the word out. I do a lot of tweeting everywhere I go when I'm visiting classrooms and I'm everywhere. So I do a whole, whole lot of that. Um, I found that parents want to know what's going on in their classroom, our stakeholders, I'm tagging them. It helps generate um, connections with them and they know that we appreciate what they do. And um, we have STEM showcases or science fairs where um, the same thing happens and students are able to articulate their learning. Because for me, it's more than just you know, but are you able to explain what you know? And are you able to tell that in a important format? And so that's pretty much all I have um, for launch, but we do replicate a lot of these same things in our middle and our high school. And we've gotten to the point in the upper grades where People are coming to us for the internships and the externships and the out, outside of the classroom um, events for summer camps and things like that because they know our students are really in, interested and want to be involved. My name is Terry Tussman. Um, I actually teach in all the Project Lead the Way programs. I teach in uh, engineering, biomedical sciences and computer science on the high school. And then I do GTT and launch. So. Um, I've been around a, a while. Um, I thoroughly enjoy uh, teaching Project Lead the Way as you could probably discern just from, from my doing all the Project Lead the Way stuff. But my focus, even though a lot of the partnership activities that I've learned, I've learned a lot at the high school that I've used in Gateway and I've learned some at the elementary school. I'm gonna try to, I, I tried to pare all of this down into uh, something simple that makes a lot of sense um, just as far as uh, Gateway goes. So some ideas on how you can create community partnerships. Um, mentors are, are obviously a really good one. Uh, partnerships with other industries. One of the things I do with parents, on the first back to school night, I usually give out a little three by five card and I'll ask them, um, you know, tell me a little bit about your student and how they learn best. But I also had a thing asking, um, you know, what kind of, um, if you work outside the home, is there something that, uh, you know, what kind of career do you have? Would it be something that you'd be willing to um, share with our students or have some kind of uh, interaction if that ever comes up? And in that way, I found out about patent attorneys. I found out about a pharmacist. I found about a lot of different people who have been, uh, who have come in and um, given presentations during, um, during our, uh, the course of the school year. Um, industry is kind of a given. The school board, I always make sure that my kids are in front of the school board because the school boards not only provide the funding, but quite often they know a lot of people out in the uh, community that they could uh, kind of get you in contact with. But it's also good for the students to present to the school board, but it's also good that the school board knows the kind of the phenomenal things you're doing in, in, the, um, in your classroom. So um, the school board is actually a really good person um, to get a partnership with. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce, that's the local businesses in uh, Racine, where I live, it's called RAMAC, and it's a manufacturing board. Um, businesses in general, uh, I do contact people like um, Wisconsin, uh, half a block from my house is actually Ascension. Um, and what I do for them is like if I need hospital supplies for some of the activities my kids are doing, a lot of times they have things that go out of uh, expiration date and they will, uh, you know, they'll give me sutures, they'll give me trays, they'll give me blue pads, they'll give me stuff to use in the classroom. So those kind of partnerships that you develop over time are really important as well. Uh, community organizations. Uh, we have um, like Halo, which is a, a, an outreach for the homeless people. Uh, it, other businesses that way, the YMCA, uh, uh, faith-based organizations, a lot of times they, they offer things. Um, we have a veterans outreach program and we have built tiny houses for their um they have a tiny house park for people that are veterans that are homeless 
um, in the project be the way kids help build those and to staff those. Um, and then universities, higher education. Um, I don't know if you know, but a lot of private um, colleges, um, a close one to Racine again is Marquette University. Their professors are required to have three different aspects to their teaching. One is they're in the classroom, one they're doing research, and the third one is that they're doing something out in the community. And I've had people come in and talk to my kids, um, as well as giving, um, being able to provide some um, references for my kids for what they're doing. So a couple of really quick examples on what some of this is. Um, I, at one point, was working in Kenosha at a, um, a middle school called K-Tech. We had a um, partnership with Snap-on Tools, and they actually put in an innovation lab, which you are seeing right here. These are some kids that are working in there. Um, they have some pre-cut uh, boats and that they're learning how to do hammers and how to uh, use calipers. As your kids are doing things in design and modeling or in um, you know, any of the activities where they're building and they're using the calipers, there is a program that Snap-on has that allows them to do that. We were also looking at using that to get the kids certified as eighth graders in um, the use of calipers. So that's a really good partnership. And you know, whatever the local area industries are by you, you could find something similar. Another thing we did was um, every year when I start my gateway classes, I always start with some kind of design uh, challenge. So we're always using the design brief going back over the design process. So um, for a long time, this was um, the, first, the first project that we did. These are seventh graders. And I was going to the local grocery stores and asking them for boxes before they broke them down. And then I had called Costco and Costco said, hey, you know, we have these big sheets or big platforms that we put in our on our pallets and the, on the skids. And they are kind of uh, lever boards that go in between. Come on over. We'll give you as much as you want. And then they threw in duct tape. So the kids, you could see that they went through and they did the design in their design books, excuse me, in their engineering notebooks. Um, they were able to go ahead and put these things together and um, that was something that just having an, um, a relationship with somebody as simple as Costco, um, and they really enjoyed it because the kids wrote them letters and we sent pictures. And um, the next year I got a call from Costco saying, hey, when are you going to come get some more cardboard? And is there anything else you want? So those kind of partnerships are very, uh, very rich um, and important. And, you know, they're kind of fun. You get to know people. Um, the other thing we do at the end of our uh, seventh and eighth grade is we do an engineering fair. So the kids actually, they will do a project. The seventh graders, this was based around their energy, um, uh, their energy in, uh, in the environment unit that we were doing. They had to take something that used uh, something that was a non-renewable energy source and turn it into a renewable energy source. And we got people from the uh, mentors that we had, people from our advisory board, people from the community would come in and they would run through. We gave them a sheet on what to ask the kids questions. And uh, it's just things for them to kind of assess the kids on what they did. So one of the ways that we get partnerships is we have people come in and actually interact with the kids that are professionals in the community. These two girls were eighth graders. The eighth graders had an open-ended uh, project design. They could do whatever they want. These two girls decided they wanted to do something for dogs that as age and had cataracts and they wanted to have something to give them um, uh, some kind of device that enabled them to walk without bumping into walls. These two uh, young ladies, and I gave them a contact of a veterinarian person. They called the vet and they talked with her a little bit. I also hooked them up with a local optician, um, our optometrist, so they were able to call her and find out what was doable for, um, for using dog studies. So and again, another partnership out in the community. And these are just some girls that are explaining to one of the judges what they, what they were doing. So that is really the Reader's Digest condensed version of how you might be able to use um, community connections. But um, again, I try to take a big, there's, there's tons of things you can do and, and just give you a couple of, of quick examples. Great. So I don't know if you have any quick questions on that, but I would be happy to entertain them. I don't know, Glade, do you want us to do that at the end? Well, yeah, if we could, I wanna make sure TJ and Brian have an opportunity to share. So so TJ, if you can can share your screen and, and talk a little bit about what you do. TJ, I, I don't know if you're still on mute.
There we go. That better? Yes. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. My apologies. Uh, and I, my apologies. So dark. I'm up north building a cabin right now. So, um, I'm I'm in a little different situation as far as uh, goes. I I teach gateway. I also teach at the high school, and I also teach an immersive engineering program. So, I'm kind of all over the place. But industry partners for us have been. Uh, absolutely fundamental to the growth of our program. So in 07, when I started the program, we had 39 students that signed up. And in our school district right now, we're over 6,000 as an elective-based program. So we are constantly looking at and reassessing everything from curriculum to industry partners. Our industry partners that we have currently are um, right up, <laughs> I'll be honest, I just after our conversation yesterday, I started to go back and count and we're just short of 100 industry partners that are involved um, minimum of two times in a school year. And we rely on them from everything from judges in competitions to feedback. Um, so it's been a, I can't stress it enough how important they are, but um, this year our industry partners brought into us over one point almost 1.3 million in donations just to the department. So um, so the advisory groups, we also have them as students. So we actually took it a step further with our advisory groups and our students run our advisory groups with the professionals. And then the flip side of that is the students also have standalone advisory groups where they determine how they're gonna outreach to different communities. Um, it's all student driven, it's different kinds of projects. Um, the link that I have in the bottom corner there, um, and I don't, I don't apologize if it's not active. It's um, if you go to YouTube and you put in Shock B Lily Pad Project, that was the last one that the kids did, uh, where they created stuff for cancer students. So the engineering kids were um, creating a lily pad that slides on the bottom of, I, of an IV stand so that the IVs would not pull out with little kids like toddlers and uh, leukemia kids and that, and that sort, the, the smaller size, if, if that makes sense. Um, our projects is where we make connections. So every one of our projects, before we distribute them to kids, they go through our advisory and our advisory gives us instances and reminders. And in many times will give us better feedback on how to make the projects better. And then that flips into the industry partners. Um, I have one company that will show up with a flatbed pickup truck and drop off all of the metal that uh, scraps that they use from uh, cutting and, and machining. And we can use that in a ton of different projects. So my consumables costs are pretty low. Um, the biggest takeaway that we've gotten with the industry con connections has been our uh, continuity of our programming, um, everything from biomedical to civil engineering, aerospace. I mean, we're all over the place. I've got students that are, uh, I've got one student that works for Lockheed um, and he's designing the next gen um, fighter plane for the US military. He's a part of that. If you've ever seen the X-Planes video, he's actually in it. Um, then we've got, when you create those projects, and this is the hardest part of teaching any kind of programming is we as teachers know when we have special things going on, but we do not do a good job of getting that information out to the community and to our industry partners. So part of my, every project, every assignment, major assignment that we do is the kids have to do date to one of the members of the industry council. So they all have a series of them and they all rotates, they all choose, but it's just to tell, give them an update on what's going on. And the industry council, because it's, like I said, it's almost a hundred businesses that uh, creates a big buzz and then they come back and wanna do things. Um, that's generated funding, donation speakers, and then um, some really awesome partnerships. These are some of the partnerships, um, just a few of them that we do. I'm in Shakopee, Minnesota. Um, so I'm on this of the cities and I have a river river that's just north of me, everything north of me, people from 3M get, will fund because I'm south of the river, they don't. So I've got a little bit different set of funding, um, set up, but we've got a, a large number of businesses that are heavily, heavily involved 
Um, and if you look at this, there's um, like Dimation, for example, very, very, very small company. Um, my students on the internship portion, so those internship students come back and talk to my younger kids and they also talk to the industry partners, but those internship kids were building uh, electronics and what's setting up electronics that uh, were used on the Mars rover, the last, the last Mars rover. Um, and we're kind of all over the place. TJ, I, I know it is so difficult yep. to go over everything that you're doing, but I do want to give Brian <laughs> an opportunity to share it. The amount of speakers and, and participants no that you have is just incredible. No worries. <laughs> okay. Brian, if you want to share your screen and share a little bit about what you do. Okay. Glade, how, about how long do I have? Just a few uh, minutes? The, there's a <laughs> countdown clock at the top, uh, about four and a half minutes. Oh, I'm in great shape. We'll we'll jump right to uh, we'll jump right to the heart of it then. Uh, so Brian McDowell, uh, I'm in Fort Thomas, Kentucky, and uh, and really really enjoy all this work and really have learned that going third after the uh, after those two is is pretty tough. Um, uh, so, uh, in terms of of getting um, you know collaborations and partnerships going. Uh, Everything that TJ and Terry have said, perfect uh, for myself and my kids at the baseball game and talking to the other parents and going, hey, what do you do? And just starting those conversations have led to incredible things and just knowledge of your community and where to go and where, how to start making connections. So it's, it's just almost being opportunistic within your communi community to, to, to put people together and, uh, and make really cool things happen. On a broader scale though, uh, STEM ecosystems. Uh, if you've not been to that particular website, and I can stick it in the chat box here in a little bit, uh, you may be able to go and find it, uh, closer to your area, uh, the STEM ecosystem that's close uh, for me, it's the Greater Cincinnati STEM Collaborative, and they have changed uh, much of what I do in my classroom, I've added amazing things, bicycle clubs, uh, 3D printing clubs where we're making, you know, printing cars and which one goes the fastest, uh, our drones and, and adding to that. But the partnership part of it, what all three of these have in common is that, well, I'm not an expert on any of these, uh, but I was able to find uh, people in the, in the community that were. And, you know, I, I know initially the, the idea of having a guest speaker uh, is is great and, and seems like a good idea. But in my experience, sometimes that's great and sometimes it can be, well, a little awkward, especially if they've not maybe uh, worked with middle schoolers before. So I, I, I kind of changed my mindset. And rather than uh, the guest speaker sort of concept, I created experiences where, and I think uh, Terry and, and TJ were, were, were doing this too, but they're, in, they're, they're giving feedback. Right, so our bikes in trouble. Uh, what can we do here? Or you know, this program it, it's just not working quite right. And then we've got that computer programmer right there with us, who then jumps in and starts doing what they do naturally. And then the stories that they really want to tell almost kind of come out organically, and and really is kind of a cool situation. Uh, and then from that, it just starts to build. Uh, having those partnerships, uh, having is, uh, well, uh, kind of being in a situation where, as we're say working with the drones, uh, they may notice that if we have a couple more drones or a couple more devices, maybe things would go a little smoother. Maybe they even come up with the idea of donating that to us. And, uh, and that's, that's, the work that I've done and, and, and been kind of the main thing. So we're down to about a minute. That's basically the gist of, of my stuff. So I'll stop sharing and Clay, go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much, Brian. My name is Jody Morgan Peters. I am a master teacher for Biomed. Um, I teach PBS as a master teacher. I also teach human body systems at my school. So I'm in my seventh and sixth years respectively in both of those um, at Newton Community uh, School District. Um, I do have an active partnership council and um, this picture that you're seeing here on the side is 
um, the day of our white coat ceremony. So I'll talk about that for a second. Um, but we do have occasional meetings with my partnership council. Um, the white coat ceremony is something that happens during the human body systems year at my school because we only have the two classes right now. We're looking at adding MI. Uh, but like many of your school districts, we are short a science teacher right now, so we can't add any new electives at this time. But um, but I have a white coat ceremony so that all of my human body system students end up with their own lab coat that is has their name um, and NHS biomedical science on the, the uh, pocket or on the uh, front of the coat. And my partnership council donates the money for those coats. And so they are invited to a breakfast one morning before school. They all get treated to breakfast and then they get to put the coats on um, the students and share a little bit about themselves, their career journey. Um, and I have them share any advice that they have for students who want to go into the medical field. Um, I do have a lot of guest speakers come into my uh, room as well. And I'll share a list of those if you uh, want to get your uh, cameras ready, um, your phone's ready to take pictures, that might be something that you would want to do. Um, I also have all of my principal students, all of my first year students do a job shadow at the end of PBS. So I have them keep a little career journal um, going where they, uh, they actually have some pages. I have them fill out uh, different careers that we talk about in PBS and kind of their interest level and then I have them also research salary ranges and education needed for those particular careers. And then at the end, they get to choose one that they would like to job shadow in. And then I line that up for them. The, and that all comes from my partnership council. Um, I have never had a partner uh, decline a job shadow. So if you're hesitant to reach out to your community, I'm gonna say, don't be hesitant. They just like education are trying to create pipelines to their different uh, jobs. And so they really do want to interact with our students. They really do want to uh, show them what they do and get them excited and create that pipeline. They also sometimes loan me equipment, which is kind of nice. And um, if they have supplies that are expiring, things like, um, you know, like PPE, if we just need gloves for dissecting, they don't have to be sterile. So if they have things that are sterile that are expiring, they donate those, they donate um, expiring uh, gauze pads and things like that for the control the bleed things that we do in PBS. So that's kind of good. Um, this is my list of guest speakers. So if you want to take a quick picture of that, this this is these are the people that kind of fit into our curriculum pretty well in P, uh, PBS. And the kids love guest speaker days. Um, this shows actually students in the back of an ambulance. And what I do is I have a paramedic team come to the school with an ambulance. I have half of the students stay in the building with one of the paramedics and half of the students go out into the ambulance with one of the other paramedics. And they actually crowd all these students. You can't see them all, but <laughs> they crowd them all into the ambulance, show them all of the equipment, let them look around and open doors. And um, they show them the outside where all the equipment is outside of the ambulance. So these are really good experiences for kids to get to see and be hands-on with some of these different careers. The job shadows that I've lined up, and this is just in my community, which is a rather small community, although we do have a community hospital. Um, these are all of the things that I have lined up that I could remember um, with my students at the end of PBS. So they all go out just for their class period. I'm in a block class, so I have 90 minute blocks. So I let the kids go out just for their block. Um, they, some of them drive themselves. Some of them have to get delivered by me um, in a school vehicle, but we do our best to get all the kids where they're going. If they're doing something um, ambulance related or uh, police department related, I do arrange for those people to pick the students up. So that's helpful as well. Things to consider when students are off-site. Um, this is one that I think it's easy to overlook, but in hindsight, it's probably one of the more important things that you need to be thinking about. Uh, you need to think about liability, safety, permission slips, um, HIPAA, and students' PPE. So do they? what do they need to have? How do they need to be dressed? Um, do they have permission to drive their car to something off-site uh, from their parents? 
Um, and these are things you need to run through with your administrators if you decide to do something like this kind of ahead of time. And if you're interested, I can share resources that I have, my permission slips, things like that. Um, I also do some community outreach with my program. This is showing um, my parent-teacher conference night. I have students bring their parents, aunts, uncles, whoever's grandparents, and I let them experience some sort of a one of the labs that we do. So this is just uh, a parent, a grandparent, and an aunt of this girl who's sitting in the front here. Uh, and her actually her nephew too, they all did DNA extraction at parent-teacher conferences. So it was kind of a fun, I let them lead the lab and show their parents and whoever they bring how to do it so they get to be the boss for the day. Um, and I don't know how many of you teach um, at the high school level, but uh, we have a really hard time getting parents to come to parent-teacher conferences. So it's my draw to get people to come. Um, I'm also considering doing a Science Wednesday. This is something I've been talking about with my administrator to actually have a community outreach where we bring community people in to do some of the labs that we do in biomed. Um, whenever I do have parents come to conferences, they always say, ooh, I wish they had this when I was in school. Um, so it's maybe a way to kind of reach out to your community. Um, newspaper, get familiar with who your school correspondent is. We have somebody designated for school stuff. So I have I text him and I say, Chris, we're doing this really cool thing. And he comes over and takes pictures and they end up in the newspaper. And it's good promo for your uh, for your community and for your kids and for your program. And then, of course, school social media posts. I'm constantly sending pictures to our um, activities secretary and she pushes all this stuff out for us. We also have a Future Health Professionals Club. It is not HOSA. Um, HOSA is also Future Health Professionals. We do not go by the name of HOSA because we're not a HOSA club. Um, my club is very student-led. There's minimal fundraising. We do field trips. Uh, we organize additional job shadows, additional guest speakers, um, and they also do their own social media posts as well. So that's another way to get your students and your program out and visible in your community. And then I also have an alumni club, and this is made of stu former students who have completed some, some sort of training in the medical field. Uh, they come back as guest speakers. They do Zoom, Zoom chats with my kiddos. Um, they can serve as mentors for students who are thinking about going into these fields. And also, hopefully, if some of them end up local, they will be sources of job shadows. This particular girl with the long blonde hair um, just finished up. Uh, her master's degree and is now a prosthetist. So she makes prosthetics and she brought all of her graduate program projects in and let the students play with all of these things and uh, they loved it. So that was kind of fun. My contact information, if you wanna take a picture of that real quick, feel free to contact me. I'll send you whatever I have. If you need ideas or whatever, shoot me an email. All right, was that fast enough? <laughs> I think that was perfect. We're halfway okay. through. So Jeff can go and then we can do any questions from anyone attending. All right. Sounds good. All right, so my name is Jeff Copper, um, and I am currently the CTE um, program support TOSA for Beaverton School District. Um, if you ever see uh, where the Nike headquarters is located, about 10 miles southwest of Portland, um, that's where my district office is. It's right next to that headquarters. So um, I've been a project related teacher since 2010, um, and I've um, in three different pathways so, gateway um, engineering and also um, biomedical innovations. Um, or biomedical science. And so I got involved in this just because I loved and fell in love with CTE, um, career technical education. Um, and so now um, with the pandemic, I made a transition, uh, it was not my choice, but I got basically voluntold that now I'm basically supporting all of our CTE programs, um, which is also encouraging our three um, project related programs that we have at my former school. So um, we have an options high school, six through 12 that has gateway, computer science, engineering, and biomed at it. And so one of my roles is to support those as well. Um, one of the things I just want to say from my experience, and, and I just want to encourage all of you because I know that you're new, is to dream big. 
Um, I know it's hard when you see like Jody and I talk about our programs. Um, I was transferred um, in 2009 to start the program, the biomedical program at my former school. Um, and then by 2017, we were up on the main stage at the PLTW Summit, um, being recognized as one of the top biomed programs in the nation. And so I wanted to show a video that we showed at that summit, but also to um, just want to encourage you too, is, and I, I think that for me, when we're building partnerships, um, no one told you that you have to be do your own marketing. Um, and I think that's one of the things I've learned um, firsthand as we go through um, and learn about CTE and, and probably the way, you know, our classes are expensive and Biomed traditionally does not have um, all the community partnerships that um, the other computer science and engineering do through probably the way. And so a lot of times we have to do things organically. And so um, Jody mentioned about working with your, um, your school district, basically PR people, and that's what we did here. So when PLTW asked my kids to be up on the summit on the main stage, um, we also were asked to create this short video. And when we go to our partnerships, then this is the video that we show. And so I just wanted to show it to you as well as relatively short. But I also want to encourage you too, is that I think we underestimate the value of having the kids tell their own stories. Um, the kids tell the stories and they're going to be more powerful than us. And Jody mentioned that how important it is for alumni. And I found that when we bring um, basically our state representatives or state senators to our school, um, when we've had, you know, our Oregon State Treasurer come down to visit my school, having the students do the talking and not the adults is way more powerful. So we try to articulate in this video. And so that's why I wanted to show that to you. Hi, I'm Jeff Crapper, and I teach the biomedical innovations and biology classes here at Health and Science High School. Health and Science is a project lead the way school, and we have both tracks here, the engineering and also the biomedical. So my name is Tom Baker. I'm the engineering instructor here at Health and Science. One of the things that we've been trying to do from the very beginning uh, with Project Lead the Way is to really integrate our engineering and biomedical pathways. Um, it was never our intent to have those be two distinct and separate pathways, but we always wanted to re-engage and reconnect our students, especially around the capstone uh, senior year. We have students of both pathways are in the same class. They're sharing engineering expertise in, in biomedical classes, and we have the biomedical perspective brought into the engineering capstone class also. And it really benefits us both ways. The VO2 machine measures a person's lung capacity and lung efficiency, which we then can use to connect to different studies and their age and their physical ability. We're in the medical detectives class, and so today what we're seeing is they're doing a hands-on lab to get their heart rate, blood pressure, breathing rate, and then to see how it changes through physical exercise and even through like meditation and cooling down. They get to experience what you get to do with the medical side of this school. The high schoolers have a lot more knowledge and wisdom about what goes on in high school, and so if we get to talk to these middle schoolers and tell them how awesome some classes are in high school, it might like influence them to go take those classes. Jennifer, so what I'll have you do is I'll have you step on the plyometrics box and then jump off of it, in front of it. And uh, while you do it, I'll be looking at the screen, okay? So I'll press record and then um, I'll tell you when to go. Okay, you can go. All right, that was perfect. You want to come take a look at what we recorded? Okay, so as I'm playing it, you're here and then I said go and you see how you jump on top of it and you fall. So the system we have here, the way it works is that each of the eight cameras are able to send out infrared light and this infrared light hits the markers and as the infrared light hits the markers, the markers bounces off the light back to the cameras. We already have footage of a female doing box jumps. Over here we are capturing footage of Mazen doing box jumps in order to conduct a comparative study of the movement of the knee between male and female. So motion capture is the process of capturing the movements of the human body or objects. It is being used in many industries around the world. Some examples are it is being used in the video game industry, movies, the military, as well as biomedical and medicine. And here at HS2, we're using the motion capture system specifically for biometrics and kinesiology, which is the study of how the body moves.
So one of the things I want to encourage is you're building your partnerships and you're looking at how you're going to make this work. So like I said, I I was transferred um, to start that program in 2014. And by October 2017, we were on the main stage in Orlando, Florida. Um, And it was very coordinated and very intentional about what we did. Um, I, my program, as you, as you saw, we're highly diverse. Um, my students spoke 101 different languages in our district. Um, at my school, students spoke 34 different languages. Um, we are a white minority school with a very high poverty rate. Um, but um, we made a commitment that every kid and every student deserves a right to have access to high quality STEM education. And that's why we chose probably the way um, for our curriculum. Um, the thing I want to say too is kind of encourage you to think about the snowball theory. Um, And Jody mentioned to you about how, you know, partners don't say no. I would say the only thing I would say that is slightly different than that is there's usually a hesitancy to say, be the first person to say yes. But once someone says yes, everyone else wants to jump on that bandwagon and they want to be part of something. So I started this program with some old veneer equipment that didn't work. um, And I realized, okay, I have a budget of $5,000 and how am I going to get this started? And one of the things I realized is that using your partnerships and trying to create visual illustrations that people can connect with. And so everyone basically knows like the Gatorade commercials where the person has a VO2 max machine on and they're running and they're sweating. And I'm like, how do I create that? And one of the things I found, so our only, my very first purchase for $5,000 for our program was a VO2 max machine. The reason why I wanted to do that is I wanted to be able to market our program and I could show that my kids could do what indie professionals do in, in real life. And so they were able to show that they could use a VO2 machine. They were doing this through their experiments for VI, um, for the, ex- the physiology unit in module two. And they're able to make those connections um, as well. And then once we did that, my principal comes to me, okay, we got some other people on board. We have some other industry parts. I want something better than that. And I'm like, dude, I just got a VO2 max machine. Like, really? And he's like, all right. So we used our Perkins money and we bought the, the motion capture system that you saw. Because that's something that people always saw as well, right? Is how do you make those connections to industry that people can relate to? Um, and so this is what you see with the animation. They also see with, of course, with, um, again, with kinesiology and biomechanics. And so that was our connection. So that's one of the things I wanted to kind of look at and talk about um, and look for your connections as well as what is your passion and how can you use that passion to build your program and to make those connections? Um, my background is that I'm licensed in sports medicine. I'm also a firefighter and soon to be an EMT. Um, and I think that one of the things that I am passionate about is how the body moves. And so I designed our classes with that as a focus. Um, and by starting small and showing that we were actually able to use those resources as well, um, it made a huge difference um, in having other partnerships come on board. The other thing too is with being um, teaching biomedical innovations and being our capstone, Um, is that I invited our partners to come by um, as well. Um, I asked them to be judges um, and really made those connections too, is like, hey, um, how can we create authentic learning experiences for our kids? Because what I found is no one really cares how smart you are, but they basically care. And the the most important aspect is how do you articulate the information you're trying to share? And I wanted my students to be the, the best possible um, basically professionals out there and sharing their information. And so, um, the major thing, oh, 56 seconds. All right. Um, so the key thing I saw, which is cool is making those connections, um, and having a girl up on the main stage at summit. And that was the first speech she's ever done publicly before, um, and making those connections. And then also, um, Jody mentioned HOSA as well. Um, we started out with 10 members in 2016 and we became the largest chapter in Oregon, um, about 120 by 2020. Um, we were literally the last host uh, SLC before the pandemic. So, um, but that's a little bit about our program and with our partnerships, making those connections, marketing your program, um, and basically getting that wall factor. First, I uh, want to introduce uh, Danielle before I get going. She is with uh, Project Lead the Way and one of the uh, people who uh, work in the office. And she's going to be making sure that I keep to a good limit uh, of time. Um, as well as hitting the record button. <laughs> so if we are good with that. We will uh, get underway. Um, so welcome. Um, I'm going to approach that a little differently than uh, um, Glade did. And I would encourage you, if you have a question in the middle of what I'm talking about, ask it then. Um, because I, I just, I don't know, I just like that interaction piece uh, much better. 
And again, feel free to uh, throw things in the chat and uh, Daniel will be helping me uh, look at that. So first thing we want to look at uh, is me. I don't know why, but uh, I am at Rainview High School in Aurora, Colorado. Uh, many of you have uh, may not have heard uh, of Aurora, Colorado, but unfortunately our claims to fame are um, the, uh, the theater shooting a few years ago. Um, was uh, about a mile and a half from here and I had several students who were um, in the theater that night. So that's unfortunately one of the sad things that we're known for, but we're also known as being a hub of uh, business and industry in aerospace and engineering. Um, we are in an urban setting with 2,300 students and 140 faculty. Um, over 50% and I think that number has increased uh, probably uh, to probably 65 to 70 percent um, in the last three to four years. Um, and I teach a myriad of class, uh, classes. One of the things that Margaret brought up was um, your original training is uh, my original training uh, out of college was in psychology and English, neither of which qualified me to do anything uh, in the real world. <laughs> so um, I stumbled into uh, retail and then into teaching. I've been 30 years teaching, and there you will also see my um, email address as well as my website. Anything that is on this um, slideshow will be um, available uh, on the, uh, well, we'll throw it in the chat as well as, um, there we go, throw it in the chat, um, as, a, as well as on my website. So I'll show you that a little bit later. My interpretation of community partnerships really falls into the strands and the ways that I can go about finding those. Um, and so these basic uh, steps, we're gonna just dash through very, very quickly um, because I, I just, there is so much here that I could talk about that I honestly, I told Danielle that they said uh, five minutes and I, you know, I interpreted that as an hour and a half. So luckily, you're not going to have to uh, put up with that. But again, this uh, slideshow will be available um, to you. Um, the biggest thing around community partnerships to me is figuring out what your community needs. If you're in a, a rural setting, um, it makes sense to find those businesses that are involved with the uh, uh, rural setting. And I have the story of Dactronics down here as a perfect example of that is the University of uh, South Dakota or South Dakota State, I think. Um, we're training and they're one of the best uh, electrical engineering com uh, companies in the, uh, in the country, but over 80% of their students were leaving um, South Dakota uh, after getting their degree. So two professors had this idea to start a uh, company making scoreboards. And it started very small and it's now uh, they have scoreboards um, on every continent except uh, Antarctica and some of the biggest scoreboards um, on the planet. Uh, so they are an amazing, and that's taking that community piece and turning it. And you can see from my location here, I've got Northrop Grumman, Buckley Air Force, or Air Space Force Base. They just changed the name, Lockheed. Uh, I've got an NSA off. I've got all of that here. But just because I have that here, we don't often know uh, what's available to us until we start looking. Here's my biggest one is families and staff. It's amazing how much and what a beautiful um, connection families can have. I was struggling getting Raytheon uh, for a long time. I had this girl and I was talking about Northrop Grumman. She said, well, my dad works for Raytheon. And we now work with Raytheon uh, equal uh, in terms of time, effort, and energy. Um, with uh, Northrop now, just through that. Uh, service groups, Rotary, Kiwanis, any of the retired military. Uh, the Air Force Association is a big one in our area, and they've provided a lot of folks who come in. Local government agencies, our Unit 3 cybersecurity unit that uh, we worked on, um, there's a part about uh, a municipality's uh, cybersecurity around their uh, training structure, or their uh, water structure. And so I just casually called over there. I accidentally ran into someone I knew, and he put me in contact with the guy is, our city has 
one guy that all his job is is cybersecurity for the water system. So it's those types of connections. Career and technical advisory boards, I know a lot of you probably have those connections um, uh, already, but there, there's some that uh, I recommend. Our school district has several advisory boards. I actually sneak in on a couple of the others and go sit in on those so that I can make those contacts. Professional associations, industry programs. Um, there's a lot of uh, really uh, exciting companies that are doing some things. And the Burns McDonald, um, I'm extremely happy with um, because I just got one of those grants that she spoke of. So $10,000 that's going to go to two things in my mind is uh, more professional development for our teachers, as well as um, inviting and working with middle school students by doing science nights in the four middle schools around us that feed into us. So it's gonna be a great connection um, because we've never done that before. Um, we may steal a few students from our rival high schools, but I'm okay with that because we got a really strong program. And then social media, LinkedIn, um, colleagues, all kinds of uh, locations. Again, we found some folks with social uh, media. Again, there's some tips and tricks, you know, follow the rules with the district. That sometimes becomes our biggest challenge. Um, and properly evaluate. This is one of the things, too, is kind of have an idea of what they're going to say because, again, there's nothing worse than having to try to backpedal on stuff. Uh, but, again, most of our industry stuff, that's usually not that big a deal. Um, uh, start small. One of the biggest problems we've had uh, with other schools uh, that I've worked with is that they try to do everything at once. And I will tell you, 12 years ago, I started with Northrop Grumman and then slowly built all of those. Now the NSA office, when they want to practice their talks that they do around the country, they actually come practice them in my classroom. Um, so it's really uh, uh, exciting. Don't be afraid to change. If you got something that ain't working, don't, don't hang on to it just because you've had that say, we want to try something different and be honest. Look for grants and fundings. That's amazing. I've, by pure accident, got 30,000 in the last uh, four years. I've been very lucky. Um, I had a Northrop Grumman person come into my building and she was commenting on my cybersecurity class that um, the kids were struggling having to go to different tabs when they were working from the tech and then the virtual image. And she said, you know, could you get, you know, could you uh, use uh, uh, two monitors? And I said, I could, but unfortunately the district doesn't have funding for me to it. Um, three days later, I got a call from our grants office that somebody just dropped off a check for $3,000 for you to buy, uh, to buy uh, uh, second monitors in your classroom. So, I mean, that's how a lot of those. The other silver lining, and I want to really talk about, or just mention this too, is one of the things that we've always struggled with is how to get partners into our building or our kids to the partners. The really cool and exciting thing is with the pandemic, we're now used to doing these kinds of activities. And so now we can bring in people from all over the country on uh, in a virtual setting. And that's, I, I think, I can't tell you how much that uh, is opening up uh, some of the folks that we'll be working with. I want to take a couple of minutes, and if you guys have any questions, because unfortunately there's a lot there. <laughs> Let me click off of that. And I want to show you, again, um, I'm at the point of retiring, so um, I'm actually building a lot of my resources for the next few years, and one of them is my website. So um, if you just make uh, mention of my name, that slideshow is there. What questions do you guys have? Thoughts, ideas? And again, I put the uh, that uh, slideshow in the uh, chat, and again, that will be the same uh, slideshow you can get off of my um, website as well. Thoughts, questions? Do you guys have any ones that are working for you now? Danielle, I'm, I saw you started to say something. Well, I was just going to say, I know that we introduced ourselves, but do you guys mind um, introducing um, yourselves and maybe yeah. where, you know, where your school is located? 
perfect. I apologize. I forgot that. Okay, I'll start. My name is Sandra Cook from Oswego High School in Oswego, Illinois. One question I have is this is a really big push this year for us to get industry partnerships has to do with Perkins funding. How much time does this take outside your school day? And is it like a lot of work? Not a lot of work because this is the first year myself and my colleague who will introduce himself in a minute are teaching cybersecurity. And that is like a big thing your first year. So just curious how much time it takes outside of the classroom. It does. Um, it does take some time with meetings, um, but I come back to my tips and tricks about starting small, start with one, and then build on that. The, I, I know that you're absolutely right. Everybody's hitting us with this idea of we have to have these community partnerships. The problem is if we go off in 18 different directions, we're going to uh, we're going to struggle with it. Pick one, focus and build. All right, who else? Hi. Oh, uh, oh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, hi, I'm uh, Vish Shankar, and uh, I teach at the Charter High School in California, Los Angeles, California. So, uh, my school uh, will be having three years uh, as a pathway in computer science, starting with computer science principles and uh, all the way to cybersecurity and uh, computer science uh, A. So and I'll be the only teacher at that school because I have my background and uh, I'll be able to teach. But my question is uh, to you is, uh, how do I start looking out for internships for students after they have completed so they know they get some experience while they are learning all these things. And by the way, they are all doing it for the first time. They never have any computer science background and they represent, uh, I know uh, Randy, you said you have uh, like 53% on reduced, but I have like almost 100%. And then also they are all underrepresented in the industry. One of the recommendations on internships is start looking at um, the larger companies. Uh, my internship started with Northrop Grumman. This last year I had interns at Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, the NSA, and Lockheed Martin um, that all had to get security clearances. But if you look at those big firms or government agencies, um, the cybersecurity, there is a website and I can't remember it offhand, um, but internships uh, for cybersecurity uh, nationwide, and it's out of the NSA office. And so those, the larger companies generally have committed to internships. They're a lot easier because they also then know what to do with an intern, whereas a lot of small companies say, yeah, I'll do an intern, but they end up making coffee all day. Um, I love it when an intern comes back and says, you know, I ask them, how's it going? Great. What are you doing? Can't tell you. <laughs> That's a great one. John, how about you? Yeah, um, so I, I'm John Miller. Uh, I teach at Oswego East High School. Uh, Sandra and I are partners in crime for the last few years uh, teaching computer science principles. Uh, for the last five years, we both also teach an intro programming one and programming two class. And then we just went through the cybersecurity uh, core training and a um, little overwhelmed by what that class is going to be. Um, I will add that um, we have an advisory group through our local community college um, that they connect the CTE teachers with uh, business and, and stuff like that. And I think that's probably going to be one of our biggest routes that we're going to go with this because uh, they're already setting up some of these advisory committees and, and things like that where we'll, we'll jump into that. We also, being in urban, um, suburban Chicago area, um, Sandra and I both live in a different county, so there's another community college that's available to us, and we've made contacts with them with the uh, uh, Gen Cyber um, Boot Camp run by the NSA. So we're going to look at, you know, touching base with those guys, and I tend to run into them at a particular uh, microbrewery, and uh, we shoot the shot, shoot the, uh, the 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 stuff out there when we're doing that as well. Um, good. I uh, am excited for you guys. Um... Who did you guys have as master teacher? Oh gosh, <laughs> I knew you'd ask that. Um, 
it, like it, it was a whirlwind. So I we had um, Julie from California. Oh, Julie, Julie and Katie. Julie and Katie, correct. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm the, so, uh, yeah, I'm the, and it went well, it's just, uh, all righty. It looks like it's cutting us off. So, um, folks, again, um, my email and that is there, feel free to reach out to me at any point in time. Um, I'm there 24 seven for you guys, um, regardless of the curriculum, whether it's engineering or computer science, um, but I am there to help in any way I can. Danielle, do we need to go back to the main room? Uh, I have one more question, yes. uh, if you don't mind, Randy. Yes. So uh, I'll be taking the PLTW training for cybersecurity uh, starting in first week of August. So will I get more information on the uh, internships, uh, programs, and I can ask, or is this the forum that I need to ask? Um actually talk to your master teachers. Um, I think you might either be with James or possibly me. Um, okay. So uh, there's, uh, the master teachers have a really good background with that. So that's a great time to press them because I, I think they all have programs. So absolutely uh, make that a big, because that's a big focus on about the third or fourth day of the second week. So, okay. all right. Thank you, thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, we're at our two minute warning, but we, we have two minutes. If you guys have more questions oh, or we okay. can head on back to the room, whatever, whatever you prefer. Absolutely. Oh, John, uh, can you talk about Gen Cyber? You say, are you already, is your school already associated with it or are going to be starting? Well, it's, um, uh, Sandra might be better at finding the, get the information on it. She's the one that got the original contact on it. Um, it's it's a program that's run at least in our area through uh, the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois, with the National Security with the NSA as a sponsor of it. They also have a um, at the College of DuPage. They have a regional um, what is it um, a, a training program for police programs and for uh, they have a training academy for a lot of the police departments. And they have a national security training facility up there um, for the FBI and um, other organizations and agencies. So we're we're lucky from that standpoint that they've got all these all these resources plugged together. And I saw you put the Gen Cyber information in. Um, we've been through it in person and through virtual, and the in person is significantly better. And and I will tell you the same with our cyber training too. In person is so much better and I can't wait till we go back to that. Um, the other thing I would encourage you guys to do is go to the summit in October. Uh, if you haven't signed up for it, great item to sign for. It will be an event. Um, I'm doing a couple of sessions there. Uh, so uh, I would love to sit down and uh, chat with you guys there too if you get a chance. Um, but uh, oh, we're going, uh, they're, they're telling us to go back. So, um, but again, if you have any questions, you're always free to ask. And again, a lot of my expertise goes well beyond uh, just PLTW, although my focus is PLTW, but. Thanks for joining our little breakout room. This is the engineering room. I think that's the right one. So it's good to have you. Uh, I'm Jason Ritter. I am with Project Lead the Way. I was an engineering master teacher for eight years. Um, so I'm really excited to hear what our Master teachers have to share on partnership teams. Um, feel free to ask any questions as they go through um, anything they share. And uh, we are recording this session, so hopefully we get some little uh, snippets out of what they share and even questions or other feedback that you guys might have with your own schools. And um, just it's really an open conversation, so feel free to ask any questions and let us know what you have. And I'm glad to see we have Emily on here so we can get a little bit of the partner perspective as well. Um, and with that, I'm going to open it up to Josiah, and he's going to uh, lead us off with what they're doing at his school and his partnership team. Thank you, Jason. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? All right, perfect. Um, my name is Josiah Parker. Uh, I am a, an assistant principal at uh, Penn High School. In, it's near South Bend, Indiana, uh, or up near Michigan, Indiana, Illinois. 
Uh, I've taught Project Lead the Way for 15 years. I'm a CEA master teacher, so I'm on the engineering side. Um, I still get to teach that a little bit, which is great, but I oversee our whole school's Project Lead the Way program, uh, K through 12. I'm our CTE coordinator, and I'm in charge of community outreach, which kind of fits right into all of this. Um, I've created a, a quick PowerPoint. So there's a tiny URL on there. If, you, if you'd like access to this, you're welcome to. Um, so if there's anything that I show or talk about, you can bring it up. We have a pretty big partnership team, and it's kind of expanded over the years. So when I was a Project Lead the Way teacher, it was just Project Lead the Way. And I kind of moved up and took on more responsibilities, so that grew with me. Um, so now it's our, also our entire CTE partnership team. And I, I call it a partnership team versus an advisory board, um, but it's the same thing. So I kind of want to share with you a little bit of how I, I go about planning this. Um, the first thing I do with anything is figure out what, what's the why. Like, why do I want this partnership team? Not what I want it to do yet, but why do I want it or why do I need it? Sometimes you need it because you have to. Like in the state of Indiana, uh, all CTE programs have to have an advisory board or partnership, partnership team. So that's part of the why. But here's kind of my why um, for why I have a partnership team. I really want to make a difference and change lives of our students and not just our students. Sometimes it's your staff and your community too. Um, you know, get students ready specifically for my community. Like I don't want I don't necessarily want my kids to grow up and move away and go do something else unless they want to, but I would love for them to stay here in my community and see what's going on. And I just, I love my students in my community. It's a great place. I enjoy where I live. Uh, and then this last one's is something we do with our, within our school, rigor, relevance and relationships, the three R's, uh, so that's kind of a, a mandate sort of why I have this. So if you're going to start a partnership team, if you're looking to kind of just begin, um, one of the first things to do, obviously, sort of look at what you already have, do a self inventory. But once you have that done, you really need to find the people. That's that's the most important part of your partnership team are the people. And this is a continuous thing. You are constantly adding new people. So here's just a list of some things to look for. Uh, for me, our local chamber of commerce is huge. Um, this was not the case in some of the other schools I was at, but where I am currently, they are a huge help for us. We go to meetings, we go to events, they help us plan things. Uh, it, is a, it is probably my biggest partner uh, for Project Lead the Way or anything else. Another one, I hit my last bullet on there. Every single person I get a business card from, I tell them, you're giving me your business card, so you're going to be on my partnership team now. Uh, and again, I, I'm a, expand a little more beyond just Project Lead the Way so I can fill other things in, but don't forget about those other people. Like just because they may be a lawyer or in the business world doesn't mean they cannot help you in your engineering or biomed or computer science world. Um, so there's a lot of, of usefulness of many different types of people. Once you've kind of found those people and you're probably gonna have a small group to start or as you're adding on, Kind of the next thing is, is to start asking those people or how do you ask those people? So there's just a quick a list of bullets that I use when I, when I make an ask. Uh, some of the things I really wanna point on here is that time commitment. I put one to four meetings per year. I, I have two. I would not over meeting people. They already have a lot of meetings. I don't want a bunch more. Um, and only, only have a meeting if you have things to do or talk about. Like your meetings could just be emails or they could be a virtual type thing. Um, to hold a meeting, just to hold a meeting, people see that and they, they get less than enthusiastic about it. So they're probably less likely to participate as you go. Um, so really think through that and only kind of have what you, what you need. And don't forget, if, if you ever have an ask and somebody says no, that's great. I would not force them or try and push them more, but ask if they know of anybody else or have anybody else in mind. That's, I've got a lot of names from there. You know, they, that company itself may not be interested, but they're like, oh, I've got a friend who works here or a relative there or whatever. And I've got a lot of names that way as well. So um, think through that as you're, as you're doing your ask. Then kind of the next part I put on here is what are some things that your partnership team can do for you? So what do you ask them to do? What's the point of it? Um, and it changes. Uh, here's a big list. I'll let you read through these as I kind of talk, but um, from year to year, even it changes. You know, we've, we've looked at adding the digital electronics class. So that year, I wanted the expertise from my partners, you know, people that were in that world already, what, what stuff do I need? What kind of um, education do I need besides the project lead the way training and, and stuff? Um, you know, what kind of partnerships can you offer? They've done great for giving us both teacher and student experiences, whether it's internship, work-based learning, 
We have a teacher externship, it's called, where they can go work at a, at a place for a couple of weeks or all summer. There's just a lot of different things they can do. So start looking through this and, and thinking through ideas of how you can interact with your partnership team. And sometimes they just need some recognition or want some recognition, you know, that they love being mentors, you know, judges for activities or projects, things like that. But don't forget it's a partnership, so you need to give as well. Uh, so be a partner, not just a predator. Find ways that you can give back. And this was the hardest for me. Like, I'm just from a school. I can't give them money. Like, what are things I can give back? So um, I came up with, with a list of some things that you can give them potentially so that it does feel like a partnership team and you're not just taking, 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 uh, but you are trying to give some things as well uh, in your partnership. And then just kind of keep it going. Um, start small. You may only have a few partners. Like when I started, I was, I'll say, just a teacher. I was a teacher. There were three or four partners I had found, and that was it. And it just kind of kept building. And as we came up with projects, um, the one thing I did, I started with projects. So I came up with a project or an idea, and then I found people that could connect to that project somehow or had expertise in that project, and I got those on board. And as we added more projects, I found more people. Um, that's kind of how I went about starting it. Um, it could just be cold calls. You might just call a company and be like, hey, I'm a teacher from so-and-so. We're looking for a partnership team. And that could be a way you find your partners as well. Uh, and then just try to build on it. Try and get your administrative support. Um, get you the, your partnership team into your school every chance you can. Build that. You know, get, them, get them invested with the kids. Let the kids see them. Let them see the kids. Build it. Adjust as you go, you'll, you'll find things that work and things that don't work, you just keep going. And then once you get to a point where it gets a little bigger, spread the work out. Like you may just be the lone teacher starting this and that's okay. That's how I started most of mine. Um, but once it gets big enough, start to find other teachers, start finding mentors. It's great if you can find a community person to kind of be the leader of the partnership team and you're just the school liaison. That's That would be ideal in my, in my mind, I haven't got there yet, but that would be amazing. Um, and then spread the wealth too. Like even though for me, it started in engineering, but now it's business, it's family consumer science, it's our fine arts, it's arts program. It's just expanded to everything else and it gets you more assistance, it gets you more connections. Um, so spreading that wealth is a great thing. And let your students lead. Uh, I know most of your teachers probably know this, but your students will surprise you. Get them, give them the leadership, give them the reins, let them plan this, let them um, communicate. Uh, number one, it takes some work off of you, but they will really surprise you. Not only you, but they'll surprise your partners of what they can actually do. I put a couple links on here. If you grab this URL um, and look at the, the, email or the PowerPoint, if you click on either one of these mission to engineers, this is a program that we started our school it started with our engineering program, designing a prosthetic arm for a young girl in our school corporation. Um, and then with them and our robotics team, it's kind of blown up into this national, um, we call it mission to engineer. We're basically finding connections for people with, it, with disabilities for other schools around the country. So if you want to check, take a check, take a look at any of those things. It's a, it's a great opportunity. I will turn it over now to Michelle. Okay, thank you, Josiah. That's good. And a lot of what I have to share kind of um, repeats a little bit, but we're kind of going to show you what the program could look like. So our program, we started nine years ago, so we're still fairly small um, in our starting of our engineering academy. But um, well, there it goes. So I'm Michelle Robinson. I teach, I'm a master teacher for POE. Um, have a lot of other roles at school, but I brought with me Laura Beth Gines today. She is our internship coordinator, and she's going to talk more about how to get kids into internships, and I think that is one of the strengths of our program now, and um, thought you might be interested in some of that. So our advisory board, just real quick, is much smaller than our partners. So our, our advisory board kind of comes in, ours comes four times a year, they come once in nine weeks, we do it during lunch. We provide them lunch so that they can take off of work at lunchtime and come in. Um, and they come in and help with exactly what Josiah was saying. They plan things for us. They come in and help mentor. They watch our senior presentations. They judge um, science fair. They have um, 
kind of directed us in what we need to put into our curriculum. Like we need more technical writing or we need this. They were instrumental in putting in our aerospace course. Um, so again, those are fabulous people. We include current students and alumni students. And we also include people from post-secondary education. So um, some of the colleges around, um, but it started with people that had graduated from our school, people that were parents of our students in the program. And again, anybody you can find, and as you talk about your program, get their card. But things that we've had them do, guest speakers, don't forget about things like you think a civil engineering firm may be boring, but like Yates Construction came in and showed them their virtual reality or the Arcs and Sparks demo from Intergy for safety. Um, those kinds of things. Field trips, they offered field trips. So we've gone to Nissan. Um, the kids got to see the drones at Neil Schaefer. They went to Baumgar. It's not Baumgar anymore. I think it's Beyond Trust, but the computer science course went there. Um, so think about field trips that are interactive for the students and engage them in what kind of careers are in your community. One of the problems we have in Mississippi is that every one of our kids are going and getting college education and they're moving out of Mississippi. They're moving out of our communities. Um, so we wanna provide them with a, a vision of what's here, what can they do if they keep their families in Mississippi. Michelle, so quick, pause, the, uh, uh, speaking huh? of, quick pause, speaking of vision, we lost your PowerPoint on the oh. first slide. Oh, well, okay. I don't know. <laughs> it says it's still sharing. I don't know what it did. Try it one more time um, or just go to um, share screen. Let's see. I'll see. Did that make it show up or no? Yep, we got it now. Okay. Thanks. All right. So anyway, one of the particular field trips that we did was with Entergy and we had, we went to the power plant, we went to the lineman training facility, and we went to the, um, uh, transmission operation center. And that particular field trip was fabulous for them. Uh, it fit right into POE and activities 1.2.1 and 1.2.2. So that was one that you could think about doing if you have an energy place. We've done some teacher externships with Nissan. Those were fabulous. We've been in education for so long, we forget what it's like. I may have a chemical engineering degree and worked in environmental engineering, but I haven't done it for 20 years. So it's completely different and things look different now. So we do some of those. Um, the other place where we connect our partners is in our showcase. We actually had booths from our different, some of the companies came and provided, you know, materials and things that their students, our students could do if they came to work for them, what type of jobs they had available. Um, so that's another place you can invite your community partners in. Um, and then internships, which is our biggest piece we have added. So probably in the last, I don't know, four or five years, Laura Beth can um, talk to that more. We have started adding internships. So I couldn't do it. I was the teacher. I did everything in the program. I couldn't go out in the businesses and find these places and get connections with these kids. So we finally pulled in our work-based learning teacher from our career and technical center. So ours is not a CTE program. Ours is an academic program and we don't have CTE in our building. Our students get bused to a career and technical center for the whole district. And Ms. Gines works there and she was the work based learning. And we pulled her in to do internships. And unlike traditional work based learning where the students kind of find their own jobs, they can still find their own internships, but she has done a tremendous job at placing them and getting connections with the careers they're interested in. So I'm gonna let her talk a little bit about our challenges and how she's kind of grown that program. So Laura Beth. Okay. So she ran through that a lot of information, but just to say if a summation of the two things that I'm hearing, um, especially I know from ours firsthand is we have a really strong community. And I noticed from the PowerPoint from Ascension and the other um, partners that, that, that that's, a, that's a real big tie-in. And it really takes some community effort to make this work. And I didn't realize that I was um, taking a position to be in sales, but really that's where we are. Um, we 
and 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 I'm gonna tell you this too because I, I feel like I'm a TikTok how it started and and how it's going, how it started was before the pandemic, and I had. I had this vision of what it should look like. And I was working with my superintendent and my administration and Michelle, who absolutely will not pull any punches, tells you exactly what she thinks. Um, what I thought we were doing and what it ended up being, which is, is way better than, than what we thought it would be, um, was I was telling these partners that you need to put these high schoolers in positions of mentorship where you're helping them, but also giving them some experience because we need to build the workforce. Well, I didn't know that's exactly what was about to happen to us. And now we have partners that we asked for to join us that kind of left. And now they're like, oh, um, these people might have something. And we built that around that advisory because I started, um, again, she said I was CTE. That's where I came from. And so I had an advisory board. I was on every advisory board, which actually ended up being to my benefit that I will literally take everybody's name and start like boggles, scrabbling them, throwing them out there and figuring out how that piece is going to fit into the puzzle. Um, and so thankfully I had with my community a lot of foundation to build on by pulling from all those advisories and then so that's the challenge that was the challenge in the beginning is trying to convince these grown adults to deal with these babies and these babies that think that they are <laughs> grown adults and, and so that will get us into some of the bigger challenges that I had um, with helping them find their locations. Some of them were a little spoiled and didn't do the best of jobs. Um, that is where the master teacher over here um, and I started collaborating regularly and being like, this is you, you, we had parent, more parent involvement. I call parents constantly um and I joke with the kids I'm like your your mama's gonna be on my speed dial because I'm gonna tell mama that it's your job and you have to do it but it's a delicate line because it is still a parent situation and so we have to deal with with the parent and the employer and we're trying to teach them to not only be an employer an employee but to also learn those skills and trades okay I think we've got people coming back from their breakout rooms now. Uh, I know we ran a little bit over today. Um, it's so difficult to, to condense this to 45 minutes because everybody has so much wonderful information to share. Uh, just a couple things I wanted to remind you of. We're so excited at Project Lead the Way um, to uh, welcome everybody, all of our teachers and our network back to our PLTW Summit. It's gonna be this October in Orlando, Florida. And uh, we're just so excited to be able to be back together with, with our whole network. Um, we will be, our partnerships team will be doing uh, events similar to this coming this fall. So you'll receive more information about that. Make sure new teachers to, to double check your MyPLTW Direct. That's the, the communications line that Project Lead the Way has with all of our teachers. So make sure that you read that for upcoming events. Um, if we were together today, I would ask for a big round of applause for uh, our partners at Ascension and Burns and McDonald. Thank you so much. And thank you so much to our master teachers uh, for participating and, and sharing their knowledge and their experiences. The things that they're doing are just absolutely amazing. I know uh, the things that I heard in my breakout room are, are just unbelievable, the work that, that our teachers are doing. So uh, since we're not in person, I can't give you a big round of applause, but I will just say thank you all so much uh, for giving up your time to our new teachers. Congratulations. Welcome to the PLTW family, and we hope that you have a, a great rest of your training session. Uh, and to everyone else and everyone on, just thank you so much for participating. Enjoy the rest of your summer. The start of school will be here before we know it, and I hope everyone has a wonderful start to the school year. So thank you again all for participating. We appreciate everything that you do.